Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the markers. Okay, uh, detection of square markers like the one that Aruko used is something that has been on the literature uh, for many years. So basically, uh, different researchers, different developers have uh, proposed their uh, type of markers. In essence, all of these these are called square planar markers because, well, you know, they are square and they are planar, okay? They are easy to print and they are very useful because you can estimate the pose of a camera by just using the four corners if you detect them. So, different there are different libraries for doing this. You have uh, R-Toolkit, you have R-Tag, Chili Tag, you have many different ones. Uh, normally, each uh, developer of the library have created their own uh, set of markers because uh, you don't only want to have one marker, but you have normally you may want to have different markers. Maybe they each represent a different object in a augmented reality uh, application or whatever. The thing is that um, in essence, these markers are always the same type. You have uh, basically an external black border, which is black. Okay. This is what we see here. Hopefully, we see that here. Okay. Uh, okay. And in here, okay, there are a set of uh, a grid here of bits in black and white. Okay. So the way these bits are filled with black and white uh, are a binary code that uh, represent the identification of each marker. Okay. So. If you see that you can you can obviously you can uh, obviously see that you can have uh, different configurations. You could have markers uh, where this grid is uh, three times three or four times four or five times five. You know, many different approaches. So basically, uh, how this impact in the detection? Well, if the less bit you have, uh, the bigger. Uh, I mean, you can detect this marker uh, at a larger distance, but you have less possible markers to represent. If you increase the number of bits, of course, you can represent many more markers, but uh, if you go far from the camera, then these bits will be very small, and then you will not be able to detect them properly. So this is something that uh, has been studied, and uh, there is a we, uh, a work in which uh, it is described uh, methods to optimally create this set of markers. Okay, by the way, uh, a set of marker is what is called dictionary, a dictionary of markers. Okay, well, the good thing is that uh, Aruko, the library, uh, can detect most of the uh, of the dictionaries that have been previously proposed. Okay, it can detect uh, April tags, chili tags. Mm, are to kit uh, dictionaries mm, uh, so you can use uh, aruko to detect all these uh, dictionaries but also uh, in one of our papers we develop method to generate optimal uh, dictionaries and so there is one dictionary which is uh, called uh, mip uh, 36 i will put the, the link here down okay down here and this is uh, the one we have uh, developed, and this is an optimal marker, so we recommend to use this in all your applications. One more okay. thing about markers, you create them and print, and that I will show you how to do later, is that uh, it is important to remark that in order to properly detect a marker, the marker should have a white space here around the black border. Okay, The detection algorithm requires this to be present here. Okay, if you create a marker and you cut it and you don't leave a white space, okay, and if you try to put markers like this, okay, what happened? The detection is not going to be okay. Okay, detection will fail. You need to leave uh, an appropriate uh, white border around the black border for appropriate detection. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to explain how to do the first step, which is to get 
and print your markers. Okay, uh, you can go to the SourceForge uh, web page and go to the Aruko uh, library, and then you will have there the files. And as I told you before, uh, there is a recommended dictionary, which is the one you have here. So if you click, you download it. Okay. Okay, when it downloads, here you have a bunch of, uh, this is the set of markers of the dictionary, okay? So, if you open it, okay, here is a image, you can copy and paste on your, I don't know, any document writer and then you print it uh, however you want, okay? So, take a look here, this number here, is the ID of the marker, okay? Is different marker here, so that's a different ID, which is here represented in a light gray uh, color. So when you print it, you know which one is it, okay? So the first thing you can do, you download this, and you try to print this on pieces of paper. Okay, the second step is you, uh, to download the library, okay? If you go into the, the, the Aruko 3 library folder, okay, what you find here is, uh, this is the source code that we compile both in Linux, Windows, and Mac, okay? And, but if you, want, if you don't want to compile because you don't know how to compile, but you just want to use the library, okay, you can download here for Windows, the binaries, okay? So if you download the binaries here, I'm gonna explain you uh, how can you do Easy detection. Okay, this download the download the library. Okay, here it is. In here, what you will see is the, uh, this is like uh, a set of folders mainly prepared for developers, so they can easily put this on their project. But if you are not a developer, just go to this uh, place here, and you can find a set of programs. Okay, these are the tools of the libraries that you can use, even if you don't, if you are not a programmer. Okay, okay. So I now wanna focus on Aruko Simple. This is uh, the first test that you should read if you are a developer. You can go to source code. We will go into detail later. But if you wanna use it, you go to Aruko Simple and uh, you execute this program. I'm gonna do it in. I'm going to do it here. Uh, okay. So this is Aruko simple. If you run it, it will say, it will tell you some, uh, which are the arguments. You see here, first you have to provide either an image or a video uh, showing one mark. Then this we will forget for a while, okay? So, what are we gonna do? Okay, we can do the following. We take, a, we take our mobile phone, or any camera we have, and we're gonna record a video just showing, okay? Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm gonna put the marker here. I'm gonna record the video, okay? Okay, let's record the video. Okay, I'm recording here. So, okay. Okay, I have already downloaded the video to my computer. And we're gonna run, okay, the experiment to see what happens when we run the program. So we basically say the name of the file here and then uh, we, press intro. What we want to see here is this. Okay, we are going to see here a bunch, of, a bunch of information about the detection times and so on. Uh, maybe you don't see this in the developer version, but this is uh, the debug version. And also here you see the marker that has been detected and the four corners in the image. Okay, okay so this is the number if you see here in the image. Sorry, this is the detected marker. Okay, and this is the number of the marker. This is the identification of the marker. If you look closely at, at the 
on the marker, you will see that it is printed here the number 61. It's not probably seen, seen here, but it's it's here, okay? Uh, so as you see in red, uh, you see the, uh, the sides of the marker, and in blue number here, it's uh, the, the ID of the marker, okay? And, okay. So we have already seen our first uh, detection. Congratulations.